All right, let's do it live on a Tuesday edition of the program. Half of us live at the CCMC. That would be me. The other half, the better half, the more important half out at Buffalo Wild Wings in Avon Lake. That's where we find the great Z. How you living, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be out here at the Buffalo Wild Wings in Avon Lake. And, and it's a shame that you can't be here. It's a shame Too Kibbe far. can't can be here there. because the people are here. They're they're crowded up. They're in ma- en masse. They're here, baby, and we're having a great time, and you guys aren't. Well, I think once a couple of things. Once when you find out Greg Pruitt is there, so that's that's a big that's part right. of it. And then the man the, of consequence, a man of consequence and character. And then when, I think when you think about the franchise being out there, that elicits the response mm. that you're receiving out there. You are the franchise mm. of this program. In in a way, you are a, a franchise of the city. Uh, you are our our prince. Uh, and so I think when you are out amongst the people, it's a rare thing to see. And so you're seeing these throngs of humans and humanity just flocking to you. It's weird, though. People are here asking for stadia- days in your honor at the stadium, and you're not even here. And here I am just really? having the time of my life. Really? That's Interesting. Right. You're a popular guy. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Eh, I heard maybe. Bishop Stadium Day. That's what I heard. It's, that's what you heard? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I suppose give me a few years, and that would be in play, certainly. Um, yeah, why not? So fantastic, obviously, to be out there at Buffalo Buffalo Wild Wings. And yes. when, when you think about uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, you think about football season. They were here in Berea yesterday. The line for our people here was around the building uh, as they were scooping up like the Buffalo Wild Wings. It was like Santa Claus came in. It really was. It was, like, um, it was like Santa came in. And, of course, remember that Buffalo Wild Ring, Wings remains the sports bar of choice for all the action. Find your closest B-Dubs location, buffalowildwings.com. Uh, catching the game at home, takeout and delivery available. My kids absolutely love this at buffalowildwings.com. You have USA-Iran today at 2 o'clock. So yes. you got a little bit of that to pay attention to. Uh, a must win. What was that, Gibby? I think there's going to be some bodies there today. Does Buffalo Gibby sound like he's whispering to you? He or sounds is like just he's whispering me? to me. Do you have the right microphone Give up here? I like that you're there as the great man of consequence. Check, check. The huge now you're on. And Connor now here. You're on. Oh, now, you, now you're working. Well, I was there peaking earlier, Congrats. so I turned it down. Yeah. Wow. Now you're on. He's back, baby. Way to go, I don't know back. why. Yeah. <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings, the place to watch the game today. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, don't play hooky. No one's working. It's <laughs> it's like the it's November. It's almost December. Irony, Once you get to December, and first we'll of all, see we, in January. What you're saying is absolutely correct. What you're saying is that everybody should come to Buffalo Wild Wings, all the various locations, but especially today out here in Avon Lake, and come in, have some delicious wings, have a frosty beer, go ahead and take in, of course, USA and Iran today in the World Cup. But Gibbet, you had that opportunity, and you yourself, you personally made the decision, I'm going to stay at work. To be fair. And not take my own advice. I, I think it was imperative. I will side with a rarely a rare Gibby siding. I will side with you guys Gibby. Are in this is an unholy alliance, and you both should be ashamed of yourselves. I would say I would be incapable the of, the of getting this. This is complicated. We're in two locations. I would not be capable of getting us on the air. Poizel so. going to be joining us. Right. It, that's another human. Yeah. We have luminaries. Okay, so you, that are it's check funny in because I don't have. Minutes. I have the memory of an elephant, and I recall being at Buffalo Wild Wings a few weeks ago out in wonderful on yeah. the east side in Aurora, Ohio. It was a treat. And I guess who joined us via the phone? Guess who joined us via the phone that day? You were here. Bo was here. I was here. Yeah. And then Poizel joined on but the phone, it, and we had no problem so playing better, better or worse. It does. No problem. In studio. Mm. Yeah. And if Bo's already here. Nathan, it's an audio medium. I love how you got a Nathan there. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I am undeterred. Everybody, you guys, listen, you, you can go ahead and shamefully pile on and do all the things that you want to I do. I love Buffalo like the great Grinch. I need some potato wedges with cheese, Connor, if you can bring those. You could have had it. You could have had it for free no, today. It would have been right here. Back. He's got my credit card The good card folks today. here at Buffalo Wild Wings, eager to serve, eager to please, to make sure everybody has delicious food, cold beers, and, and screens galore. I mean, right now I'm seeing everything that I could want to see in the sports world all in one. And all I have to do is this. And there, I've seen it all. Just one pan. Not get you it guys. all there. Yeah. Uh, by you the way, have a TV in that studio. speaking of Buffalo Wild Wings, Monday to Friday, three to six, great assortment of appetizers and cocktails. Beers start at just three bucks. That's your happy hour, three to six. That'll be here before you know it. And then don't forget about B Dub's bonus days. Wing Tuesday, buy one order. A yeah, it's Wing wings. Tuesday. Get the second order, fifty percent off Wing Tuesday today. Sure, bring us back some wings. Boneless Thursday. <laughs> 
is on Thursday. Buy one like order it. of boneless wings and get the second order free on that. So you have that to look forward to, which is very, very nice Nothing. out at Buffalo Wild Wings. So Let me tell you something. Even your boy over here, your boy Connor wants no part of you right now. He is disgusted. Look at that. He's giving you zero goose egg. That's what, yeah. He wants no part of you right now. Oh, you you're, on, you're on an island. And right now Bishop is just enjoying being the, the skipper to go to your island just for fun. I, Bishop Day. Today's Bishop Day. Well, imagine one day at a stadium and now here. So, I mean, it feels appropriate. I mean, it's a big day for you. It really is. It really is. Bishop. Yeah. Um, we will have a mailbag. So, it's a mailbag edition of the program. That is coming up at 2 o'clock. So, tweet us your questions at Browns underscore daily. Use the hashtag AskCBD. Uh, you have that to look forward to, which is very, very nice. We'll play a little bit of what we learned. One thought that's coming up at 1.30 as we go around the Lee. We had three of the four biggest spreads this week cover. Uh, the only big spread oh, that didn't was Dallas, and they, we were undone by that. Um, real shameful on that. Um, you have the mailbag to look forward to. Uh, we have MJ Emerson, who's just a dude. Uh, you'll have his availability coming up at 2 o'clock as well, awesome. and we'll play a little higher, lower, better, or worse. Um, MJ getting a lot of love here now after that performance against, uh, against as well uh, the As well he should when yeah. you blink. You blink Mike Evans with the goat throwing to him. Mike Evans in that game. In the game, Mike Evans became one of six receivers. He got to 28 yards in the game. And in the game, he became one of six receivers in the history of the NFL yeah. to have 10,000 yards and 75 touchdowns in their first nine NFL seasons. Mike Evans is one of those. The others, don't know if you've heard of them. Jerry Rice, Calvin Johnson, yeah. Random Moss. Larry Fitzgerald, Marvin Harrison, all Hall of Famers. And he went out there, six targets in coverage against Mike Evans, nary a catch, zero blanketed. Brian Baldinger tweeted out that he thought it was the best performance by a cornerback all year period. in the National Football League, period, end of st- full stop right there. So, uh, yeah, MJ Emerson, that's the guy. I want to give a lot of credit, obviously, to him. Give some credit to our guy, Jeff Howard, the DB coach. He knew that was the right matchup. Get 23 on 13, let him do his thing, and he did that, and, and boy, Love what we've got out of that third rounder. It feels like we had a first round pick, even though we did not. The, he's playing that way, right? I mean, that's that's what he's playing like. He's he's playing like, you know, an an all rookie first team defensive back. I mean, Sauce Gardner might be all pro, but he's probably playing sure. the best secondary other than Sas, Sauce Gardner in the league. Yeah, him Woolen in Seattle and probably Sauce Gardner. What's awesome is that we've split up so that this will be a more streamlined operation. All I can see over the course of the Zoom is total chaos. In Berea. No, right here, calm. we're functioning. We'll, we'll, we're functioning on full throttle right here at Buffalo. Yeah, we're Wild very Wings calm here. Everything's under control. There's nothing Berea, to see here. We're calm. We have Jacoby. All right, there we go. And oh, now right. you want to now business. Now is we're talking up. about luminaries. This is a real treat to be joined now on the hotline. Our quarterback Jacoby Brissett joining us. Uh, Jacoby, great talking to you. Thanks so much for taking the time, man. I know Nathan had some moments with you post game, and and just for. From all of us here, for us at a show, like just so appreciative of everything you've done this season and how great this has been and the way that you've carried yourself. What did it mean for you personally? And I know everything for you is about the team, obviously, but what did it mean for you personally to be able to have that win against a guy you knew really well in Tom Brady and to get it the way that you guys got it late in that game? Uh, yeah, uh, I thank, thank you guys for having me in uh, the introduction. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was great, uh, in that fashion, you know, in the moment where everybody's probably thinking, you know, Tom Brady's going to come back and do what Tom Brady does and win the game and that, in the end of the game. And, um, for us as a team to, you know, kind of rally and stay with our game plan, stay aggressive. Uh, you know, I think it was just a great team win to, to show the resiliency of this team and, and, uh, the fight to the end. And I, and I, the, the ball started to bounce our way. You know, you talk about it early in the season. Like, man, when the ball starts bouncing our way, then things just start to go our way. Jacoby, Happy. let's go. Let, go ahead. Sorry about that. No, that was it. That was all I said. Okay. Let's talk about two of the big plays in that game. Let's talk about the touchdown to David Njoku. You guys knew that maybe they'd go middle of field open down there in the red zone. You run the seam there. Kind of just take us through your thought process and then go ahead. What you saw, you leave, you let the ball go, and I know you already said you thought it might be a little high, and then to just see through your own eyes him go up and snag it with yeah. the left hand. Yeah, so we, we obviously game planned and, and understood, you know, what type of defense they were going to be in uh, in those type of situations when you got into the red zone. And, um, 
you know, talking about that play the day before, and uh, that was one of the plays that we liked uh, because of that matchup that we knew we were going to have, 45 versus uh, versus David. And, uh, you know, when I when I broke out of huddle and, and we got into empty and we knew their empty check, uh, and it was really what we talked about. Uh, so it was more so for me just to make sure my eyes were good and I didn't, you know, tip one of the safeties to go over and help uh, because that was always a possibility on that play. Um and uh, they got one-on-one coverage, and then uh, Devin White just got his eyes back in the backfield a little too early, uh, I felt like. So I just – I saw Dave kind of – he saw that and kind of tried to wrap around him on the other side. Uh, and so I just tried to put up a ball that I knew only Dave could touch, uh, obviously going at his fourth down um, with no fear. Uh, so just throwing it up there for uh, for Dave to make a play on the ball. And he made one of the probably the, the, the best catches I've ever seen in person uh, in my life. And um, – yeah, he came down with it, and I was I was super excited for that. <laughs> we were all super excited. That stadium was excited, incredible. I think it's the best catch I've seen, certainly in my 10 years here with the Cleveland Browns. And now I want to go into the overtime period. You guys have, I think, a little mesh concept, and then it, it seemed to, from my eyes anyway, that you know Amari kind of saw the defensive back stumble a little bit and kind of just ran through him and was wide open. Where were you looking, and then at, at what point did you see Amari and say, oh, my God, is this really happening, and make sure, let me make sure I put it on him. Uh, so we, we have been talking about that play for a couple of weeks now. And, um, you know, actually it was a double move for, from Amari. We're running mesh, comp- uh, mesh concept, but we're running a double move with Amari. Um, and then on top of that, it was one of the first times they actually gave us like true man to man, uh, like one on one in that game, uh, with Amari, uh, with no, with nobody kind of helping out or something like that, yeah. so to say. And uh, as soon as that, we broke out of the huddle and we're in a, in a formation to where we got the, the answer as far as what the coverage was from the start. So once I saw that, I, in my head, I'm like, I'm going to Amari no matter what. I know he's going to crush this guy. <laughs> um, so it was a matter of me just holding off the safety uh, and just, you know, kind of buying a little time in the pocket. I, I, we did a really good job in, in, in keeping the guys away from me. Uh, so I had time to, you know, let Amari develop his route. Obviously, we know he's one of the best route runners in the, in the league. So you kind of got to give him a little time to – to get into his route uh, to do it. And, um, you know, he obviously made the guy, I mean, he made the guy fall twice. And uh, so the, that was the that was the hard part. And then my part was just throw him the ball and uh, give him something that, you know, that he can run with. Um, you know, he was so open that those are the ones that you just, you know, you just don't want to miss, you know. So I tried to give it enough air, but not too much to where the safety uh, kind of saw his guy fall and, and made a play. So uh, Amari just did the rest. Jacoby Brissett on the hotline with us right now. So that takes it all the way down to the three yard line. And, and obviously as, as we've alluded to, and, and we've, we've all been through this, that it, it felt it, you, you just, it's like, it wasn't a win until it was a win. And I'm, I'm yelling like three times, Nick Chubb, like, let's just pound this thing in, man. Um, and it was like, until we crossed yeah. the line, you know, like I, I didn't want to deal with a hold. I didn't want to deal with anything. I just wanted Nick Chubb three yeah. times. What was it like in the huddle, like just making sure you put that thing away and got the result? Because it feels like, obviously, so many times those things haven't worked out for whatever reason for us at the end of games this season. Yeah, and it, and it was more so just not taking the moment and every, you know, fundamental and technique for granted, you know, making yeah. sure I get a good snap and get my legs away from the center so that when the, the guys are, when you get down to that, that low, like legs get caught up so many times by quarterbacks that get stepped on because they get a push up front. So just make sure my legs are back, make sure I got a good handoff with Nick and uh, making sure I called the play right and make sure I got the motion landmark right. And, and things like that, those are the thoughts that are going through my head just because, you know, in my, in, in my heart, I knew we were going to win the game because it, it was nothing that was going to stop us from winning the game because I knew what we were going to, what we were doing down there. We're giving, we're, we were going to give the ball to Nick Chubb every time, you know, and um, <laughs> it was no surprise. So, so I was trying to make sure I did my part, which was probably the easiest part is calling the play and, and giving the ball to Nick Chubb. So I just make I was just making sure of that and um, you know, obviously the guys in the huddle already put it in our in their minds from the from the start of that drive that we we're gonna win that game and uh and I'm just glad to see that it, it came to fruition. So are we talking with the Browns quarterback Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby I'll start with a simple question and then maybe follow up depending on what you say, but do you feel like you're playing the best football of your career right now? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely feel like I'm I, I'm in that one of those zones to where, uh, you know, I feel like I am playing in some of the best football uh, in my career. Probably I am probably playing the best football in my career. Uh, and, um, 
yeah, so I, I definitely believe that. So when you decided to come here, you said you were the right man for the job, and we'll talk about the reaction to you in a second, but let's talk on the field. Career high in completion percentage, career high in yards per game, career high in quarterback rating, career high uh, in yards per attempt, career high in QBR. In fact, you've been in the top 10 in the league in QBR for the whole season. What is What was it about this offense? What was it about this scheme, this personnel, this just working with Coach Stefanski and that offensive staff for you that that made it so that you are playing your best football? And I know they, they count that Hail Mary as an interception, but in my mind, finish the season here, or you finish your first run here, right? Five straight games without an interception. Uh, you've thrown, you know, six touchdowns in the last four games. What was it about this that just set so well with you, your skill set, and, and allowed you to see it so clearly and execute at such a high level? Uh, I just think about, I mean, it's the, the guys in that room and, and the, the guys on this team, you know, uh, obviously – a lot of talented guys, a lot of hardworking guys that you know go out there and make plays. Uh, obviously, the scheme uh, with with Kevin, Drew, and uh, AVP; those guys are, are, are very smart. Uh, so the way they you know install and, and call the game and and you know try to get into my head and me trying to get into their head as far as like you know what we're thinking in certain situations and and our preparation and things of that nature. Um, you know. Being around, you know, Deshaun and 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 and, and Dobbs and, and Kellen and just and picking their brains as far as, you know, what they think. It, it, it I definitely think that has helped me and my, you know, progression into this offense. Um, to where that, I don't think it was just me that was playing at a high level. I think our offense was playing at a really high level. You know, we were, uh, I want to, I mean, we we're a top five offense in the league for a reason. It's yeah. not just because it's not just because of me. It's because of, you know the O-line, the running backs, the tight ends, the receivers, to the guys in that um, in that room, in that, in that offensive room, you know. Jacoby, seventh year in the league, and, you know, you've been around long enough, you know how these things go. Like, is was there ever a, a point, you know, over the last couple of years where you thought, I don't know if I'll ever get another opportunity like this to, to be – it feels like you and Kevin, like, just almost see everything the same way. Um, you've had this magical kind of view, the two of you this season. At least that's how it's felt to us. Do, are, it does because of your history and the amount of, of you know, you bounced around a little bit, played for a lot of different coaches. Did, do you do you appreciate this almost even more because of that? Uh, yeah. And to, to your first question, yeah, I didn't know when my next opportunity was going to come. Uh, so obviously, try to you know relish in this moment. I know I said it every day, but like I was just trying to be in the moment because it's. Like it's it's hard to find a situation where things kind of work in your favor. Um, and then uh, yeah, I think me and Kevin just like really like hit it off. But like I said, I think it's the room and, and um, you know just being around those guys and being being able to. I think my experience in the league has helped me be more vulnerable and be able to say like, hey, I don't like this or I do like this. I want to do more of this. I need to work on this. Um, so I think that all played a part into like you know going into Sundays and then starting over the next week and then going into the next Sunday and then starting over the next week. I think just, you know, me being in the league for a while and me, you know, I, I will honestly say my therapist helped me, you know, become more vulnerable in those situations to where I was using my voice more uh, as, as far as things that I liked and didn't like because I ultimately I, I had to realize that I was the one that was out there on Sunday playing and going through the game. And, and, and so I think that kind of all just encompassed one thing. Jacoby, we've talked about, obviously, what you've done on the field, and, and I now want to ask you just about the reaction that you got. Look, the Browns wanted you from day one. I remember the day that the Browns traded for uh, Deshaun Watson. I ran into Coach Stefanski in the office, and I said, you know, you know what are we going to do? Or, or initially, he said, we've got our guy, and that was obviously you. They wanted you. You come in, and it's been – and I don't know if you know, Cleveland can be a tough town. It could be a tough town on quarterbacks. It could be a tough town on a lot of people. But, but you have been embraced by the city – by your teammates, the genuine emotion, anybody who's been around you, the genuine emotion that was on display on the sideline after the Browns won that game and you led the team down the field, Nick Chubb punches it in for the win in that locker room, you know, seeing your speech, seeing the reaction of the guys to you, you know, it, it, has this been special to you in terms just emotionally as a person, kind of the validation, the love, the respect that you have earned amongst your teammates and amongst this community, which lives eats sleeps football yeah so yeah that i mean i think that the word special is probably the the best word that i can possibly find for 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 those moments and that in that in that embrace um 
you know, I, I always say, you know, and everybody's like, well, what mark do you want to leave on a team, an organization, the community? I was like, I just want everybody to know I was a great teammate. I, like the on the field stuff, will kind of take care of itself. But I, I, I really believe being a teammate is more important to being um, being a, a good teammate is, is better than being a, a, a good quarterback, you know, and uh, because that takes you long, that takes you further. Um, I think uh, having the respect of my, my teammates, coaches, and and um, you know everybody, you know, it's just it, it that that is more important than a win to me, just because. Um, you know, this is this like it's life. This is I consider like yeah. the football is a is a game of life, but life is the ultimate game. You know, and um, it's a, I, I made a lot of relationships in this room and on this team, and uh, that I hope that that'll last a lifetime because because there's so many good players and good good people in that in that in that building that um, you know I just would I wouldn't be right if I didn't build those relationships and and be my complete self and give my 100% to this team. And um, so, yeah. Jacoby, thank you for your time today. Thank you what you've done all season, yes. the way you've carried yourself on and off the field. You've been a true testament to everything uh, that you want a Brown to be. Thank you for your time today, pal. Yeah. Thank you so much. You guys have a good one. All right. Get an the, ovation here yeah. from Buffalo Wings for Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, Love you that. can hear it. It's appropriate. Um, I, I, think he, it I think he's carved out a real special uh, part in the heart of these fans, and, and I think it's appropriate. Uh, it's been remarkable. Um, Agreed. We will react to that. We've got a game from last night to react to as well. Uh, we'll also continue to put the Buccaneers game to bed. One thought around the league coming up shortly. Uh, we're off and running here. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by Bally Bet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Rumpke. Rumpke Waste Recycling, family owned and operated. Whether you join them as a customer as an employee, you'll become part of the family. Visit Rumpke.com to learn more as we broadcast live both from the CCMC here and out at Buffalo Wild Wings in Avon Lake. We are Cleveland Browns Daily brought to you by Bally Bet coming soon to Ohio. Uh, we had a football game last night. The Steelers with a 24-17 to win over Indy. This game was brutal, my friend. I tried to watch it a little bit, and then I ended up watching. Uh, I got to a point where I couldn't take it anymore, so I watched Yellowstone, and then I came back in and watched the end of the game. So that was kind of the way I took it in. So you watched the end of the game. I did, yeah. And this is why Jeff Saturday should not be a head coach in the National Football League. I would. The I only, mean, my only pushback appalling. would be. I agree, that but was appalling. the only pushback I would be is plenty of guys who have been a coach in the NFL for a long time also make mistakes like that. So they're not. It's not like he's the first guy. Okay. They are, there's a lot of incompetence on on clock management, but yes. That was pretty stunning. When you are coming in under those auspices, you are going to be even scrutinized further. And when it looks like you yeah. have completely no clue of how football works and how clock it's management crazy. works, it's stunning. They ran they ran two plays for basically like two yards yeah. in a minute and a half when they had two minutes to go and three timeouts. And so now all of a sudden they were in third and long with 30 seconds left and three timeouts. Why? You should take a timeout after the first play. They lost 40 seconds yeah. on the first play. 40 We've it was said, insane. I, you're, you and I have talked about it for years, and I know some teams actually, they don't do this exactly, but you'd be better off like hiring somebody who just plays Madden all the time. That's right. And just Yes. Because it's just really 101 clock management. Like, you can't put seconds yes. back on it. You know, like, it's not that hard. You save all the time when you can save it. Like, that's it's this isn't difficult. Um, and you, you don't ever want to rush third and longs. Like, just – boneheaded stuff that you can't that can't I was happen. actually it's actually even crazier because I was wrong I think on first down they got like nothing second down maybe they got like six on third down after not using a timeout they ran the ball remember oh, and then right. he got stuffed they ran it on third down that's right. after they ran wasting it. after wasting 90 seconds out of their 120 they ran it so they used a timeout and now all of a sudden they were in a fourth down they should just take a timeout after the first down let's reset here let's get our wits about us Instead of this nonsense that was going on, I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous. It was what an it was a disgraceful performance. Matt Ryan, I mean, uh, sorry, brother, Washed. the goose is cooked. He's better than what than Erlinger, obviously, but the fact that they're in the five inside the five yard line and they're throwing it every single play, like you have Jonathan Taylor, and it's the irony of them showing the clip early in the game of Saturday yelling at Peyton Manning because they weren't running the ball right. was not lost on me. He was completely, completely out of his league, and, and it was just a r- ridiculous performance. They should have won that game. I'll tell you what, Pickens, I said it before the draft, I'll say it again, is going to be a star in this league. He already kind of yeah. is on his way to being a star. That defense with T.J. Watt, he makes he – makes, Alex Highsmith so much better just by being on the field, and Highsmith really dominated that final drive of the game. Um, the Steelers, they're not going to quit. They're not going to fold over. They're not going to just, you know, go away. But that Colts team absolutely uh, uh, was dreadful, and any mocking that they get over the Saturday hire, like just put watch those two minutes, the end. Yeah, it's how not to do it, and it's crazy because – You know, I think one thing, one of the big themes, and we'll get to this when we go around the league, is some of the teams that were that we thought would be bad at the beginning have now like bought into being really bad. So that's how some of these big lines are being covered. Like some of the bad teams, like Houston, no, they really are bad now. Like they are a team that gets drilled every week by two touchdowns. Uh, There's there's some other teams out there that are that are now committed to being bad. Pittsburgh isn't, and some of that is just 20 years of not having losing records. It's it's all of those things, but like, this is they can't run it very well. Najee didn't do much of anything. They ran Snell like nobody really got going running the football. They can't really throw it other than Pickens. They didn't throw it much. It's not like you're wowed by anything Kenny Pickett did in the game. Uh, but they do enough. No. And they make some plays on defense, and it's really largely more the incompetence of Indy that puts you in the position that that game goes the way that it goes. But Pittsburgh at four and seven now. Indy four seven and one. Is it that's right? Yeah, four seven and one because they were four six and one. So that's that's where you are at this point, and Pittsburgh's going to keep being competitive. They'll continue to yep. be a thorn in people's side. You won't see them push the chips in and and give up on the season. Far from it. It's just not it's just not in the nature of of that operation. 
Um, as we put the Buccaneers game to bed, we had a lot of time to talk about this yesterday. Anything else you wanted to get to that stood out Sunday that we didn't get time to get to yesterday? No, I just think it was it was a very, very interesting game. The Browns, you know, it wasn't a game where you felt great about it for the majority of it. Yeah. You scored early. You scored on your second possession. That was 10 points, and, and that was it. And so I think to just see the way – that this team rallied and to see and i mentioned it the joy the genuine joy for not only the team but more importantly for jacoby Brissett, i think speaks volumes about who he was and to have your stars shine bright yeah in the most important moments miles garrett amari david njoku nick chubb MJ Emerson, I'm calling him one of our stars. I think he's been our best defensive back this year, and I don't even think that's. Uh, no, I don't think that's. I don't even think that's a question. Like, yeah, that's not even an eyebrow-raising statement. No. Um, he maybe has been our second best defensive player. Period. I'm not sure I have a problem with that either. So it, it was just to see your stars show up when you needed them. I thought was phenomenal. I thought it was. It, it, it really was great and you know so many people are making so much about you know the scripting and the scripting and the scripting and yes we've had great opening drive success this year um but the browns have and that's something that they've tried to die they don't under you know because a lot of it doesn't make sense sometimes it comes down to execution it comes over to random turnovers you know a nick chubb fumble that we haven't seen a, a center quarterback exchange when your fourth string center goes in against the buffalo bills uh, and so they've been doing, you know, and the guy's been put in extra walk through time, extra, you know, quote unquote script. The, all the script means is those are the plays they know they're calling in that game. And so you get to practice it, you walk through it. You, so there aren't meant, there aren't as many mental mistakes on those plays as there are ones that are certainly in the playbook that they've drilled and gone through at various times, but maybe weren't necessarily walking through the, all the extra stuff in that one week because there's just only so much time. So they've been trying to even do more, walk through more of those things to get this team ready you know, to go ahead and be more effective throughout the course of the uh, throughout the course of the game. But when they needed it, oh man, they were there, and that was great to see. It was. And I think you know, for a team where, and I, I alluded to this with Jacoby, like just just give me three balls to Nick Chubb and let's be done with it, because it feels like everything that could go wrong for us has this year up until that point. And I think you know, we talk a lot about belief. Um, it, it's also something to to see it happen and to deliver it against Brady, against the Bucks. I realize they aren't who they were a couple of years ago, but he's still the quarterback. They still have a ton of talent. And to be clutch, we talk so much about being clutch. Can this yep. team be clutch? Well, to be clutch matters, and I think it's something that we'll, we'll be yeah. carrying over as we continue to play out these last seven games and chase something with Deshaun Watson. So all of this matters a great deal. It's belief. It's seeing it happen. It's a lot like hitting a bunch of balls on a driving range, but you get on the course and you can't hit it straight. You hit one, you <laughs> pipe it down the, the middle. You're like, oh, that's how I do it. You get on the next tee box, you do it again. That's kind of the yep. way this feels like it could go for this Browns team. So I think it was monumental for a lot of reasons, uh, the way that that one happened on Sunday. If a car, truck, or motorcycle accident caused you injury, call the injury lawyers at 100 Elk, Ohio, for a free case review. Elk and Elk's a proud partner of your Cleveland Browns. One thought around the league coming up next. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Bo here for my friends at Renew Home Exteriors. Upgrade the look and value of your home with new siding from Renew Home Exteriors, ranging in every architectural style in over 50 colors. Save thousands this month during the Renew Home Exteriors end of year siding sale. 24 months, no interest, no payments. Take advantage of the end of the year deals before January 1st. Price hikes kick in. Beautify your home with premium siding and roofing products at lower prices with Renew Home Exteriors. Visit RenewEstimate.com for more. We are dual live today at the CCMC and at the B-dubs out in Avon Lake. And we have a little bit of roster news, Z, before we get to one thought. Yeah, the Browns have signed Tay Davis, veteran linebacker who spent some time with the Browns, great special teams player to the practice squad. Wouldn't su surprise me at all to see him elevated on game days to play special teams. He's been he's familiar with Mike Prefer and, and a very good special teams player. All right, there you go. Time for one thought. Hello, Gibby. Hello, boys. Hey, buddy. Greetings and salutations. That's Let's right. get right down to it. Week 12 in the National Football League officially in the books on to week 13. But first, one thought from each of this weekend's games. Sunday night football, the Philadelphia Eagles 40, the Green Bay Packers 33. Philly improves to 10-1. and one. The Packers fall to 4-8. Zagura, one thought from you. Jalen Hurts, man, first player since at least 1950 with 150-plus rushing and passing yards and multiple passing touchdowns in a single game. He is He's so dynamic on offense, and he really makes that offense go, and it's opening up things for Miles Sanders on the ground. They, they still are operating without Dallas Goddard. Quez Watkins got more involved, but I thought this was a very good game for the Eagles to really just impose their will. Defensively, not their best performance, although some of the scores came late, but I really liked what I saw from them there. And then it's amazing to me how many people, in Green Bay are ready to just be like, we're done with Aaron Rodgers, let's play Jordan Love. I think they're tired of the act a little bit, which was going to be my thought, was Rodgers goes down, Lord yep. uh, Jordan Love comes in. Um, Rodgers has, you know, this has not been a great year from him, and he's, you have the excuse with the thumb, nope. which he makes comes to light last year, or last week, rather. Christian Watson really is coming along. It feels like if they wouldn't have lost so many early where he seemed disinterested, they would be in a much better position than they are now. So I heard today on McAfee, he says he's playing this week. He's healthy. He's playing. So this could get awkward down the stretch. But guess what? That's what yep. Green Bay does with quarterbacks. They did it with, with Favre, too. Know when to part ways. Yeah. Uh, to the late games on Sunday, 49ers, 13 Saints, Zippo. 49ers have won four in a row. They are 7-4. and four. Saints fall to 4-8. and eight. Zagura, back to you since it's your place of birth. Oh, well, thank you, Gibbe. Uh, I don't know if we're talking enough about the 49ers' defense. Woo. They have not allowed a point in the second half in four straight games. They are unbelievable on defense. They haven't allowed a point in six quarters. Uh, four straight, as I said, second half. Um, you got to feel like Demeco Ryans is somebody that's going to be a head coaching candidate for the way that that defense is performing there with Kyle. And then I thought this fact was interesting. So the Saints had not been shut out in 332 games, probably a lot of that thanks to Drew Brees. The last time they were shut out was week 17 of 2001, also by the 49ers. Bishop? Yeah, I, I mean, look, the, the Saints stink, and they, they've stunk for a while. A lot of their best players aren't playing in this game, but the Niners are getting healthy, uh, especially on the defensive side, and that's that dominance you're speaking about. They, they were also able to do this uh, in such a dominant fashion. They've got some injuries now. Elijah Mistral with a, with a knee injury, Christian McCaffrey yep. with a knee irritation. So um, th this is my favorite team in the NFC. Uh, in terms of fun to watch and also, I think, the favorite to win the NFC, um, but they got to be healthy, and they've had to de deal with injuries all year long. Up next, Bishop, we'll start with you here. The Raiders, after a 2-7 and seven start, now 4-7 and seven on the year. They've won two in a row, and they take down Seattle. This was a fun one late on Sunday, 40-34 to 34 in overtime. I'll tell you what, I'd, I'd say Josh Jacobs is kind of the story here. I mean, everybody talked how they were willing to move off of him, and uh, they drafted, uh, what was his name, Zamir White, and it was like, oh, watch out for him. They, they don't like Josh Jacobs. They like Josh Jacobs just fine. He's got 967 yards and nine touchdowns, another 266 on 33 catches through the air. He was a monster in this one, 229 and two scores. Um, they've got a little bit of give a damn, too, and I think it comes from their, from their quarterback, Derek Carr. They've won in back-to-back -back weeks now. They're four and seven, like us. Long way to go, but they're playing with a lot of heart right now. Uh, Zagura. This game had one of my favorite plays of this entire NFL season. So in the game, Carr throws an interception. 
Guy on the Seahawks intercepts it. One of his teammates on the sideline, not in the game, on the sideline, thought that he was touched down by Devontae Adams at the point of the interception. Have you guys seen this? Have you, do you know yeah, what I'm talking I, about? I have, yeah. Okay. So he runs on the field to celebrate with his teammate, mm-hmm. realizes, oh, he's actually returning this, throws a block. <laughs> so now they're basically playing 12 on 11, a guy who ran on the field to celebrate with his boy. Now he's throwing blocks downfield, no flag whatsoever, and he acted like he belonged on the field, and I think that's maybe that's something people need to try now, an interception return. Just get everybody off the sideline like a hockey you know, <laughs> line change and go out there and block. A, it was amazing. It was unbelievable. It was, yeah. I've watched it 100 times. I saw it on Barstool. I think I retweeted it yesterday. I know you don't follow me on social, but maybe that's how it got to you. But I, I followed uh, – <laughs> I watched it about 100 times on Barstool yesterday. It's, it's I, every amazing time I nobody watched, picked I up on it. Where's the eye in the, the sky on celebrate. that? <laughs> you know, the amazing thing <laughs> is like the NFL will sometimes. send a letter to the team and just go, hey, sorry oh, yeah. we missed that. Oh, well. Yeah. Sorry about yeah. your luck. Really? Hmm. Not sure that's right. Uh, up next, guys, this one was a dandy as well. The Chargers go for too late. They knock off Arizona 25-24. to 24. Chargers 6-5 and five on the year. The Arizona Cardinals a mess at 4-8. and eight. Zagura. Chargers had to have this one. Had to have it. You put it in the, hand, the, the arm, the hand of your guy, Justin Herbert, finds Eckler, then the two-point conversion. Awesome. A big win, and I think that's one that has a chance to go ahead and catapult them. They are a team that I don't think, if they can get healthy, get Bosa back. You know, they're a team that I don't think people, and Mike Williams comes back, they're a team that people are not, that's not going to be an easy out in the playoffs. No. That's not somebody you want to see in the playoffs. Bishop. No, but I would also say it's weird why they're always in games like this, right on the cusp of losing yep. them. Like, they have so much that they should be so much more right than they are. It, they sh- it shouldn't come down to a two-point conversion to win it against of an course. Arizona team that's in complete disarray, and yet it does for them almost every week. Like, I, I, up in the, I think the only time we've seen them really at their best was in the early season loss to the Chiefs. That's it. I don't know if we've seen them their best since, before or since. And some of that's injuries, but some of it's just – it feels like they got weird mojo, man. Yep. Yeah. All right. That's There's fair. something not right there, and it's more than just the injuries. Yeah. Uh, Kansas I'll City, a what, workman. Though, you pop Sean Payton into that uh, situation, and I feel like mm. they get real scared. That might be it, too. That might be the spot. If they pay, well, the, I don't know if the Spanos family will pay it. True. Uh, Kansas City, a workman-like effort against the worst team in the NFC West. Ooh. The L.A. Rams. Chiefs 26, Rams 10. Bishop, one thought. I try not to do – sports talk guy on sports talk guy hey crime did you guys see colin cowherd taking a shot at jalen ramsey to where he says no jalen ramsey just gets beat by some tight end well the tight end's travis kelsey Kel- kelsey <laughs> no mention of Mate, the fact I mean- of who he got beat by because it would get in the way of the fact that jalen ramsey's washed that ram the, the one thought from this like this is what you do when you're the best team in the league and that's what the chiefs are but the one thought from it is nobody in L.A. thought it would go this bad this quick. Nobody. It shouldn't matter. I realize that people are going to be you know, upset about it. But you got your Super Bowl. Everything they did was to win a Super Bowl, and they won. Real quick, though, I think what they were banking on is win a Super Bowl, and then, the, then all of a sudden you have, the, you have the city, and then you stack a couple of years to maintain the momentum. And there, it feels like the momentum for the Super Bowl is completely gone. Gone. You see they're giving That's, away tickets for Christmas? Yeah. No. It, it giving them gone. away. It's they're L.A. At, there's, they're, they're there's asking them to, they're giving to, them to charity because they're worried that there's not going to be anybody at the games. Like, it's like they won it, but I don't even know if the city cared. That can never be taken from them. The Lombardi can no. never be taken from no, them. No, I agree. Everybody wants. You wouldn't they got. not do it. I'm not saying that. I just think they miscalculated how quickly they'd fall off a cliff. Probably true, but if you look at the the totality of their run, it was still a good long run. I mean, they got to a Super Bowl with Goff. They've been, you know, it's a the power for what? A couple years, two six, or three years. Six plus? Since they've been in L.A. I, I think the big thing, though, is you've got, you have um, – th- this is the worst Super Bowl champion defending we've probably ever seen. Ever. 
And it's going to get worse because yeah. I think they're going to uh, – I think McVay could say, uh, you know what, I'm good. Donald could say I'm good. Ramsey could say I'm good like Whitworth did yeah. last year. And, and I wonder, they could be I wonder if Donald and McVay just think about that every night and go, I should have just walked away when we won it. I should have just I, – I had it. We were at the top. Nobody thought it would be this bad. You saw that the problems existed week yeah. one. I think not it was like obvious this, that they no. were going to have problems, but not like this. No. I mean, they're – it's – I, you made brought this up yesterday. Do you trade Stafford to a contender? Do you yeah. trade Ramsey? You say that. You say to Detroit. You got to get some of these Stafford draft picks back. back that you've unloaded. Give me that pick yeah. back. Yeah, they need some picks, man. Uh, to the early games here, the Jets recover. They go to seven and four on the year. They beat the Chicago Bears. I don't know, fifth string, sixth string, seventh yeah, string knows. QB, whatever the heck that was. I, I think for Jets fan, let's take a deep breath. Yes, you won, but look who you beat. Uh, Bishop, I believe one thought from you here. My one thought is, Mike, if your name's Mike White, you're on a heater. White Lotus Season 2 is great. He created it. Mike Boom. White, the quarterback of the Jets, lights out. May never, may, maybe the quarterback of the future for the Jets. Who knows? By the way, Western Kentucky, he and Bailey Zappi. Segura. What a great Mike White duo drop right there by you. The Bears' offense without Justin Fields is is non-existent, um, and it was great to see Garrett Wilson unlocked. And I hope we see more of that. He is such a talented young man. Uh, next up, two teams. He made S feel okay. By the way, he was the he was the only source of happiness for for S over the weekend. That was it. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. Poor S. Um, up next, uh, two teams that are just kind of hanging around here a little bit. The Commanders take down Atlanta. 19 to 13 Washington 7 and 5 Atlanta now falls to 5 and 7 but still in the NFC South thanks to Tampa Bay's loss on Sunday. Zagura one thought. Commanders defense is excellent um, and, and that's the bottom line. They've got such a ferocious front uh, with Payne and Allen and Sweat and they're going to get, you know, Ch and Chase Young went it did he even play no. this is he No, he did yet? not play. He did not. No. I two weeks in a row so they held him, him back. So I don't know. I, he was yeah. Two weeks Birch. in a row that, like, yeah. on Saturday they were like, he's playing, he's playing, he's playing. And, and then Sunday, Sunday nah, we're going to scratch him. Yeah. What? The other big thought I have is use the word big, literally. Did you see Brian Robinson's hat? He looked like Dark Helmet from Spaceballs. Yes, that's exactly what he looked like. And apparently they're blowing up. Like, we these guys can't even order him, get, can't even make him fast enough. Where are you going to wear that? I'm I've, not. I'm not. I didn't we order may one. or may not have one. We have one? No, no, not we. What? Me. You have one? <laughs> How? What? Uh, our golf league, one of our good friends bought one, and we, we have pictures in it. We wore it, like, in oh August. Oh, my God. So, like, in the inside, is there, like, like a like a plastic, like, head strap? And then it, it just it's that's not what plastic. sits on your head? And it's, it's, it's a little more comfortable it's nice. than that. That's unbelievable. Okay. He looked like the only two things I thought have? of were dark helmet, and then the other thing dark I thought helmet. of is when uh, the great late great Norm Macdonald was Burt Reynolds on Celebrity Jeopardy with the big <laughs> hat, the giant cowboy hat. It's it's amazing though how fake the picture looks. It looks ridiculous. Like, you have to be like it, 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 there's no way this is a real picture, and it sure I, enough. I'm going to try to get that hat in here by the end it's of the amazing. week. Bring it I, in. I, Which, I will see if do I you have a do. is it a Browns hat? No, 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 no. It's green. It's like a oh, leprechaun yeah, green and yellow. and That's yeah. amazing. Uh, they're pretty sweet. Uh, up next, it's awesome. the Dolphins, 8-3 and three on the year. Houston, 1-9-1. One, and one. Dolphins, 30. Texans, 15. Bishop, one thought. Yeah, I, I don't really have any from the standpoint of this is acting accordingly for Miami, and this, is, this was one of those teams that I was referring to when the bad have now gotten bad. Remember, there was a time where the bad teams every once in a while could rise up now some of these bottom feeders are acting like bottom feeders on a week-in, week-out basis. Although the Texans, like, didn't they pitch a shutout in the second half? It was or did 30 it to matter? nothing. It, it was 30 to nothing half. the half. They benched their starters yeah. on both they sides of the ball. The, in the first half, it was 30 I was nothing, actually and nervous was with them. about the cover. Without <laughs> And Miami wasn't even great in the red zone in the first no. half. I mean, and they a, put up 30. The Texans in the first half had 32 yards on 25 plays, which is 1.3 yards per play in the first half of that game before they benched everybody. 
That is unreal. And yeah. they had a defensive touchdown. The number was, what, 13? I was nervous that it was going to be a ridiculously absurd backdoor. Mike McDaniel's got to keep the ones in through the third quarter, man. Uh, up next, I mean, it lived up to the billing <laughs> of the, uh, the worst game of the week. Carolina oh, 23, yeah. Broncos 10. Panthers improved to 4-8. and eight. Denver falls to 3-8. and eight. Uh, Zagura, one thought from you on this trash. DJ Moore is thrilled. Doesn't have to deal with Baker. No P.J. Walker. He just gets to have his guy, Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold, the guy's a fantasy juggernaut. Sam Darnold comes back. He has 100 yards. He had less under 30 yards in three straight games before that. Darnold gets him the football down the field. He also did a great stop, drop, and roll touchdown, which I think should be somehow recreatable in Madden. I thought that was an awesome move near the goal line. All right. I want you guys to listen to this really well. They so r- listen very carefully. Now they owe, still owe this man over two hundred million dollars. Russell Wilson is seventeenth in the NFL in passing yardage. He is twenty eighth in touchdowns. He has eight passing touchdowns, eight of them. Wow. He has five picks, tied for ninth. He is thirtieth in the league in QBR. He's got his own players yelling at him. Oh man! I mean, this has gone. Here's his QBR the last – this is the last five times out. 29.1, 31.1, 22.1, 33.8, 30.1. What the Brad, hell, man? I, I know that you got to get rid of the head coach, not the right fit, new ownership group, cut your ties. Look, it didn't work out. Sorry. But We've never had anything like this, what, though. What are you going to do with that? Guy to – you know – it certainly tailed off towards the end of his Seattle run, but to go from that to just incompetent, that's wild well, to me. I'll tell you something else that's worth watching. I, I'm still waiting to see if the league, because they have to make this change, I believe, today. Week 14, waiting all day for Sunday night, Chiefs at Broncos. Oh, God. Do you flex? No way. I mean, do you flex out of Mahomes? But it's Mahomes. Oh, so that's a good point. This Mahomes is, is, box this is the dilemma that the NFL is facing. But then, like – it's Denver. So Fox had this week was Chiefs Rams was their big game. Correct. Which is before the season probably seemed like a, a wonderful game to have. Could have been a Super Bowl matchup last year. The entire promotion around it was talking strictly about Mahomes and the Chiefs. Yeah. And that Mahomes is always must see. Travis Kelsey's must see. Nothing about the Rams. They didn't even not not a peep nothing. about the Rams. Yeah. Not even Aaron Donald. Donald. They were just talking about the Chiefs. So I, they feel that they can sell on just you know just the chiefs maybe they will but i I would imagine if there are some good games you got to go ahead and make well and nbc's got some decisions to make because that's week 14 week 15 is raiders patriots sunday night and that's that whole browns game that to be determined probably will not hear anything till next week okay early next week on that one uh all right next Bengals 20 titans 16 real quick uh, Bishop, one thought from you. Here come the Bengals. Cincinnati's won three in a row. They won without Mixon. They won without Jamar Chase. Uh, they get Kansas City at home Sunday. That's a game. They're on the come. Bengals are on the come. Zagura. Huge win for them. Statement win, I thought, for them and their defense to shut down Derrick Henry the way they did. And then T. Higgins, we've been saying it all year. You've been saying it. Your people in Cincinnati have been saying it. A, a mega star in the making, mm-hmm. and he certainly is just that. Uh, one final one, and it was a big one. Helps us. Baltimore loses. They blow the fourth time a game for the first, fourth time this year. Spit it out, Gibbs. Jaguars twenty eight, Ravens twenty seven. Zagura, one thought. Horrific loss for the Ravens, and Trevor Lawrence over the last three weeks is playing as well as any quarterback in the NFL. And you see, you just wonder what would he have been like if this was his rookie year. And he got Doug Peterson the whole time to groom him. What, what kind of a quarterback would he be in year two? I'll tell you what, he is somebody that you're going to want next year in fantasy football. I can tell you that right now. He's going to—he's somebody that you want in real football. I'm just so happy for him because no his – I was worried that he was ruined, and he's not. He is who they drafted him. He, it's clicked the last month or so, um, and he was sublime in this one. So that, that makes me happy for, for a lot of reasons. It helps us, but also, um, you know, a good kid who I thought there was a chance he was going to be ruined by what happened last year. All right, good job out of you, Gibbe. 
Fans, mark your calendar. Face off on the lake presented by Meyer, the first major outdoor hockey game at First Energy Stadium. It's February 18th. The Buckeyes and the Wolverines at First Energy for a limited time. Purchase four tickets for 50 bucks in the mezzanine level. For more information, visit firstenergystadium.com slash faceoff or call 440-891-5050 for more. A little mailbag coming up next. MJ Emerson as well as a little higher, lower. Pure joy coming up in the final hour. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily brought to you by Ballet Bet on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
And there's a new way to cheer on your Cleveland Browns with the help of your favorite four-legged companion, Barking Backers, presented by Milk Bones, the Browns' newest club for pet parents worldwide. Sign up today. Barkingbackers.com. Barking Backers, the fan club for dogs. Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by BallyBet. Coming soon to Ohio here on 850 ESPN Cleveland and broadcasting today for both here at the CCMC and out in Avon Lake at the Buffalo Wild Wings location out there. Reminder that Monday through Friday, 3 to 6, great assortment of appetizers, cocktails, and beer starting at just 3 bucks at your neighborhood Buffalo Wild Wings location. And, of course, we're halfway through football season. B-Dubs can help you. The sports bar of choice for all the action. Check out your Locust B-Dubs location at buffalowildwings.com. Catching the game at home, takeout delivery also available, buffalowildwings.com. You got the football, you got the World Cup, you got all this stuff going on. Get to B-Dubs, they'll take care of you. Z's out there, they're taking care of him as we speak. Yes. Yeah, it's glorious. No score, nine minutes in, kids. No, I know, some We can't be, pa- some we near, can't be passive. Some near runs. Can't be passive. No, we got to Got to go score, because I'm pretty sure – uh, Iran can simply uh, can go for a draw and, yes. and get through. So you're going to have to take yeah. it to them, sir. You are, indeed. I can tell you this, Z, a world-class saunter out of Scarlet just right now. Oh, yeah, he's in his sauntering glory. A win, a win who is the spirits of incredible. everyone. I don't know why, based on what Clemson did over the weekend. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Ooh, he already had pushed yeah. in the chips on Clemson. I don't know. But he's got a real saunter to him today. You know in the movie Napoleon Dynamite when he's wearing that Vote for Pedro t-shirt? I of had course. that because obviously because of Pedro. Yeah. But I'd like a Vote for Gibby t-shirt. I, I feel like I'm sad that I wasn't able to be a part of the movement. Yeah, but Vote for Gibby makes all the sense of the world. Vote for Pedro. Why did we not have them when he was in studio? I can't uh, believe that have, those were. a good idea. I have it. I mean, I have one in my closet. I mean, I would have bought one. The next time he comes to town, I'm wearing a Vote for Pedro. We'll wear t-shirt. those? Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. I like it. How did he do on his picks, by the way? He had that all week? those seventeen fourteens. How did he do? He was he was uh he was over five hundred. Let's see, it was that week. Where were his picks at? Again, the number of people Pedro. in the last week that have come up to me at establishments around the city and gone, I listen on Friday. I pay attention. You should. I said, Well, congratulations on he all your was, successes. Yes, they've done well. He hit on eight of 11 he was or eight and 12 eight out of 12 he was eight and four wow eight and four run out of pedro did he beat you head to head yeah he did oh that's yeah. even God, that's better sad. that's so yeah. sad he doesn't need to know that he, he did keep that. That, keep that to yourself i've got his number i'll text him <laughs> uh all right uh, you want to do a little mailbag? Let's do it. Mailbag it up, Gibby. Yeah, we just got a couple questions here. Uh, Browns mailbag presented by Vivid Seats, an official fan experience partner of the Cleveland Browns. You can tweet us your questions now to at Browns underscore daily. Use the hashtag AskCBD. Bishop, this one from uh, Scott. If USC loses to Utah and or TCU loses to K-State, would you put Ohio State in the college football playoff? Yeah, I think, yes, it'll be between them and Alabama. I think especially USC, a USC loss would be their second. It would be their second loss to the same team, and they wouldn't be conference champions. Uh, There would be no other one-loss teams out there other than Ohio State. Ohio State would have quality wins over Notre Dame and Penn State. Look, they got whipped in the fourth quarter of that game against Michigan, but for three quarters, it's a back-and-forth game that it could have gone in any way. For the first half, they actually, you know, statistically dominated the game, held Michigan to just 10 yards rushing, so... Yeah, if USC especially loses, I do think the Buckeyes would get in as a four seed. And you got to remember, guys, it's a television show. And if I were a television executive, I would love to see Georgia, Ohio State in a national semifinal. Uh, Nathan, this question is for you. I just called you Nathan. Nathan. It just kind of came out. I apologize in advance. Uh, Hey, Nate. Steven tweets at the show. (laughs) Do you think the Brown Center – his name is Yelda Froholt, by the way. Did a good job this week, or yep. after a few mis- uh, after a few mistakes last week? I, I do think he did a um, significantly better job this week, and it was one of the things he has to get comfortable doing it. You're playing center in the National Football League, first time he'd ever taken a snap at center in the NFL in that game two weeks ago. Obviously, there were no issues on the exchange, and he was dealing with. Vita Vea in the middle of that line uh, I thought Yelda Froholt had a very solid accounting of himself because we weren't talking about him at no point did we say oh Yelda Froholt got a hold Yelda Froholt whiffed on this particular block and when that's that's what you're going for as an offensive lineman so I think that he 
by being unseen and unspoken of, did a good job. Uh, Cleology uh, tweets at, uh, this could be for both of you here, uh, since you're both big bees. Jimmy and Z had an amazing complimentary call on that Najoku TD. Curious what announcers you've studied or have looked up to across professional or collegiate athletics in prep for big moments like that. I, I think that my prep for a big moment like that is to not make a sound until he is fully done. <laughs> with no. the, it's his first line. Eight months of work is paying off, lines. young grasshopper. Beautiful. That is that is rule number one, and then I can go ahead and I can talk, but I let him have as long as he wants to go, he can go. And on, on two of the touchdowns, he did kind of like a double, and I'm, you go until it's clear you're not going, then I will talk. Uh, but, I mean, listen, we all know the announcers that we loved as kids, and, you know, for me, I identify so much with, you know, obviously Summerall and Madden. Um, I was I love Brent Musburger, obviously, play-by-play guy. Uh, Miss K, by the way, loves Chris Collinsworth. She just loves his voice, and I'm like, what? That's, That's terrifying. That so troubling yes and watch I out i troubling, mean can you imagine but... if she runs across young jack collinsworth in person and he starts no, she's not that, we, that no, no, no let me let me voice i will enlighten, no. enlighten miss k about that no, no. she's not no, no they, i already I, look i yeah, know how we all feel squashed. i'm just saying the voice is the same and it's a younger collinsworth he just he gives off an air of something that she's not interested in you don't say you don't say um so it, it, yeah, those were like Al Michaels. Um, it's funny. You know who my dad loved, which is going to be so on brand for you guys? He loved Deardorf. My dad was the big Did he Deardorf really? Guy. And, yeah, yeah, which is so on I would have had Pedro dad. as a Cosell like Deardorf. Guy. Oh, love Cosell. Yeah. Love Cosell. Like it. Yeah. yeah. Deardorf's so a good guy. He, I mean, he ended up, he was on the Michigan broadcast for years uh, after he left yeah. Monday Night Football he and left CBS. Just retired last jump. year. Yeah, he had tears in his eye uh, as Michigan beat Ohio State last year for the first time in a while. So um, that was a good way. I, I have, you know, several people through the years I think about um, from a from a television play by play or radio play by play. I always go to Al Michaels. I love Vern Lundquist yep. as well. I love Vern on basketball. Oh, I love Vern. him on golf. I love him on college football. From a studio hosting, my uh, my idol always was Ernie Johnson. I just think he does the best job of of point guarding through all of that. And then for radio, uh, Patrick. the two guys would be Dan Patrick and Tony Kornheiser. I think uh, Kornheiser's, I Kornheiser. his old radio show in D.C. and then the one, when it yes. first went national was a really perfect blend. I've, I've tried to uh, – it was something I followed a lot as I was, you know, kind of breaking into the radio business about how to do it. And then Dan, I just – Dan is not – he just kind of is who he is, which is what I think you got to be if yep. you're going to be in this business. Uh, uh, from from Eric Carroll – Thinking ahead to when we beat the Ratbirds in a couple weeks. Like the positive thinking, yeah. Eric. Can you please explain the playoff tiebreaker when you play a team twice in your division? How do they figure head-to-head when you are one and one against an opponent? There are so many things that go into it in terms of who you guys played, strength of schedule, and, oh, man, the U.S. Total and, overall like record. The right there. Oh, there's so much stuff that goes into it. it. That stuff won't become clear until well down the road. All the Browns need to do, it, and all they can control right now, is going to Houston and beating the Texans. And Amen. We'll hopefully have a few more of those, and then we can we can start to talk about some yeah. scenarios. But as of right now, the, it's way too early for scenarios. Yeah, I couldn't even do like I thought about today. I'm like, is, is this the week that I start putting in the playoff scenarios for everybody? No. And I'm like, <laughs> nah, six weeks. We've we got, got to a get lot to 500 time before you're allowed to put in a playoff scenario. Well, I wasn't even talking about us. us. I was just talking just oh, okay. in general. Big I picture. Would, I would okay. acquiesce at six and seven. Fine. We win the next two, then the I would be. The and the Bengals. Yeah, then I would be we, open because the Bengals will be a, – that's a full day. Um, but but you you handle those two, you get to six and seven, and now I'm interested. Yep. I'll uh, it. Browns backers North Jersey. Shout out. Who's on the Mount Rushmore of quarter zip wearers? Good question. Uh, Nance. Nance is the first I mean, he one created, I mean, he created the quarter zip. Um, I would say us. I feel like Peyton. Us and Peyton Manning. And the Mannings. The Manning family. Because yeah. they all shop at the same store and all wear the same clothes. <laughs> and they, it's like, totally quarters. Nice. It's, it's a, am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. No. T- not take even, Go look at a picture a of them bit. ever together. Yeah, I think Mannings, Nance, and us. That's it. Uh, Ethan tweets at the show. I want to lose weight for my wedding in May. I will be doing tree work all winter, so exercise isn't a problem. 
What do you think about the keto diet? Weird question, I know. Gibbs seems to hate these. Nate seems to know about nutrition. LOL. <laughs> Listen, we got to connect them with the Hoff. The Hoff will tell you all about getting into ketosis and, and the benefits of that. And yeah, I would recommend some intermittent fasting. Uh, that really helps. Like, go to bed when you eat your last meal. Go to bed and then don't eat anything again until you have lunch. And that'll kind of get everything going. Avoid carbs where you can. Uh, that's part of the ketosis, getting into ketosis. It's, you know, lean proteins, lots of proteins, vegetables, not a lot of carbs. And do that exercise. And you're going to, I think you're going to shed some LBs. Throw in the intermittent fasting as well. I think you'll be well on your way. And work out. You got to work out. It's not. I mean, it's all pretty. All that stuff. It all works. It's all pretty. It's what you think it is. None of it's easy. That's There's right. no cheats. It's But it is what you think it is. Meshling. No. But once you get once you get into a real state of ketosis, I think to come out of it, then you can have a big cheat like The Rock where you eat like 8,000 pancakes. Right. And 12 pizzas. And somehow Insanity. Like he likes those uh, banana the banana pancakes. He's a big Love, fan of those. Uh, Loves boy, those. does he? The coconut he, banana huge pancakes. Fan. Huge. Um, oh, yeah. Bobby Meshling. Uh, Bobby! Worst worst drink someone hey, can order at a bar. Worst drink? Yeah. I hesitate to go be to go at people because it, you know, you know, alcohol is a subjective process. You like what you like, you can totally. help what what tastes good in your mouth. The only thing I would say is as a rule of thumb, I do not do artificially colored or sweetened I don't do mixers really at all, but I certainly do, don't Same. do anything pre-made. I don't do anything that's artificially sweetened or colored. I think if you stay out of that realm, you'll do pretty good. Here's one thing people don't realize about cocktailing. Almost any cocktail that you want or ask for can be made without that stuff. It's just a little bit harder and usually just marginally harder. Usually it's not that difficult to make it without using the artificial stuff. Yeah, for me, you know, I think that, when I hear did somebody order gin, I always gives me a little bit of a I raise a oh, people who like it love it. They love it. People there's apparently there's like some bar that's got like a thousand gins, and so people who love gin guy. love gin. Look at this guy. Let me see it today. Oh, oh, it's a beautiful baby blue blazer. I mean, it's just swag delicious. People do love the gin. The, the only like I, I had once had a Hendrix gin with a muddled cucumber that was passable, like 15 okay. years ago. Okay, that was kind of refreshing. I would. I would say I'm like you, and I would steer clear of, like, any rum and sweet-based oh. drink, which I have no time for. The only time that's appropriate to have a Mai Tai is on a beach, and you can have one, and then I, I think that's it. It's funny. I always – I would go rum without all that stuff if I – you know, like, if I wanted rum, I would just do the rum with the rocks. Um, and I, on I only the, drink rum on the rocks now, too. Bamboo. Tastes like a banana's foster in a glass. It's unbelievable. Yeah, you, know, you ever had that? No, I haven't had that one. I've had some – what's oh, it called? I've not had it. Bamboo. Bamboo. Okay. It's delicious. And the, um, yeah, even, I mean, typically my, I either drink like a cold beer, an old cold beer when I'm on the beach, or I will go with a tequila on the rocks with two limes. I drink tequila. I mean, that's, that's what I'm ordering at a bar. I'm ordering only two drinks I ever order from a bar would be uh, tequila on the rocks, Reposado. Sometimes, you know, if we're feeling saucy, we'll get an Añejo, a couple of muddled jalapenos, squoze of a lime, and away we go. Or... In the winter months, there can be times where I will be talked into an old-fashioned, oh, but typically I'll just get a bourbon on an ice ball and, and oh, enjoy that as well. I, there's at least three more of these I'd love to get to. We've got to take a break. There you go. All right, we'll now, come back to it. these this later in the week. Later in the week, Browns fans can win big with the digital scratch-up game brought to you by the Ohio Lottery on clevelandbrowns.com and Brown social channels. Fans can play once per day throughout the regular season by digitally scratching off a virtual card for chances to win great prizes like team shop gift cards and tickets to future games. For more information, log on to clevelandbrowns.com. MJ Emerson, who was spectacular on Sunday, coming up next from the podium list of Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
And the Bath Authority gives you that bathroom of your dreams in about a day. Why not transform your current bathroom into a custom bath for a spa-like experience? Let the Bath Authority make it reality for you at a fraction of the cost of the competitors. The Bath Authority, Cleveland's premier bath and shower remodeler, experts and factory trained installers. You give them a call now, you get 500 bucks off your next custom bath or shower remodel. That number is 216-220-8399 or go to the Bath Authority. Dot com. It's where affordability meets quality, guys. Enormous selection of bath projects. They're all made right here in America. Take your bathroom from outdated to outstanding in about a day. Superior products and expert installers at thebathauthority.com. 216-220-8399 for 500 bucks off right now. Tell them that Bo sent you. And now let's head to the podium and Martin Emerson. Hey, MJ. You're done. So much about your kind of mentality that allows you to go out in there and compete, especially when you know other teams are going to target you. Where does that come from? Probably I would say my childhood, just that competitive nature, you know, just always trying to win, you know, and compete. Well, and then during a game, like, what's it feel like knowing that, you know, it's Tom Brady and it's Mike Evans and it's fourth quarter and overtime and they're probably going to come right at you? Like, what what goes through your head before the snap? Um, Just the opportunity, you know, just to make a play and just, like, you know, do my job and just, like, uh, gain trust, you know, from my coaches and my uh, teammates. Yeah, Martin, uh, Mike Evans is a a four-time pro bowler, you know, good size and all of that. Um, you know, what was it in your, what was it about that matchup that just made you believe that you could basically just completely shut him down? And how do you feel about the job that you did? I feel like, I mean, I watched a lot of film, you know, and I was very confident going into that game. And it was just, you know, more about just executing. And I feel like I did pretty well, you know. Hey, uh, MJ, last night someone tweeted that Evans was two of nine on targets. And I thought I saw you tweet it was zero against you. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I had, uh, he made a mistake, so I had to correct. So yeah. uh, do you know how many times he was targeted against you? Um. Seven. Wow. Every every time myself and other two. <laughs> two we caught. Zero. <laughs> all right. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. Hey Martin, you mentioned that competitive nature from when you were a kid. Did you have a bunch of brothers or friends that you were playing with? Could you kind of tell us what what happened in those competitive situations? Uh yeah. So when I was growing up, you know, we had video games or whatnot, but I always, I always play outside, like, every day. You know, I, I always had to be in before the streetlights, but as soon as I got out of school, I was outside. If, it was, if I wasn't um, in football season at practice, I was always outside just playing football. You know, we played uh, this game called Thorn or Bust Em Up as a kid, like, a real physical game. So just, like, I feel like I got my competitive nature from, like, that environment as well. Hey, MJ, I just wonder, has there been a moment this season or in camp or practice that you can remember feeling – that like playing at this level was just starting to feel natural or maybe even slowed down a bit for you? I can't really just give you like one moment, but I can just say like weekly, I just feel myself, you know, getting better and just like, you know, getting my technique down, muscle memory. And it's kind of like, you know, it's feeling natural you now. It's coming yeah. together. Denzel and Greg have also, you know, since you got here, have praised the work you put in and just how quick you've taken up to to playing at this level. What have they meant to you and, and your development and feeling comfortable playing at this level? Uh, man, I'm, I'm in meetings with them guys every day. You know, I try to learn from everybody, honestly. Everybody that's in there, you know, pick up on, you know, the good good things, bad things. And, you know, they just help me. You know, they guide me, coach me up when, they, when I need to be coached up. And I just try to soak everything in like a sponge. Thanks, MJ. Hey, we heard that Deshaun has been running the scout team the last couple of weeks. How's he look to you? Uh, he looked pretty good, man. I know he's ready. I'm excited for him. He threw a, uh, a, a fade on me. It was like a, I can't really explain it. It was like overhead, back shoulder fade that only the receiver could catch. It was like out of bounds. And the receiver had to like throw both his arms like over his shoulder to catch the ball. And I have no chance to make that play. So I'm excited for him to come back. That was a great throw. What kind of a lift do you think it's just going to give you guys to have him out there with you? Uh, I feel like Deshaun's very explosive, you know. I feel like we'll have, you know, we'll have a more, a lot of more explosive plays. 
Hey, Martin, um, just going off of Tom's question there, I mean, considering the the kinds of throws like you're saying that that Deshaun's made in practice, how much of a learning experience has that been for for you, even just this this short time that he's been back and, and further back into into training camp and things like that to have to defend some of those throws? Uh, it's like, you know, it's practice, but it's just like game reps in practice, you know, so it's very helpful. Uh, yeah, Martin, uh, what did you think of David Njoku's touchdown catch? And um, and did it, you know, did it cross your mind, you know, that, you know, you will have chances like that? And how the heck do you defend something like that? And then also, what's it like to go up against David in practice? Oh, man. Um, great catch. It's probably the catch of the year. It's hard, you know. That catch and that just Jefferson catch is probably the catch of the year. Oh, Joy Pickens, the one he got on me, too. That was a good one. But, <laughs> but yeah, man, that was a great catch. You know, I'm happy for him in a in a big in a big moment. So, you know, that's what we work so hard for, for moments like that. And um, in training camp, I never – I never 30. had a bullet. But he did score on me one time. You know, he got – he's a big body, you know, stronger guy. So, you know, I always like going to get somebody that's going to make me better. Hey, Martin, um, the way Miles played at the end of that game yesterday, despite having that – um, really painful shoulder injury. Did you notice that? And then what does it say about him? Man, Miles, he no. ten. Better. Man, he gonna he gonna give it. You know, everything he got every every time he step on the field. And that's a guy you know that I want to go to war with. You know, and play behind. You know, and, and battle with him because he, he turned it on and you know he made some great stops for our defense that we needed. You're up. You're up. All right, that was MJ Emerson at the podium there talking about his great performance against Mike Evans. MJ Emerson really just blossoming here in his rookie season, Bo, and it's great to see. And every once in a while it happens where you see somebody in camp and you just – just the look of them looks right. And yep. he looked it. I'll never forget, I was, I was on holiday uh, and I missed the first week of camp and I came in week two and I said to you, 23 is whom? And, and that was him. And he just jumped off the field. It was obvious early. There was just a lot to like about the way that he went about his business. And now it's manifesting on the field at the highest level against Mike Evans, where he played. Wasn't it Baldinger said that? You mentioned this earlier. The best he's ever seen a yeah, quarterback play all year. Yeah. That's absolutely. high praise. Ryan Baldinger, a little film breakdown. Seek it out at Baldy NFL. I retweeted it earlier. Um, yeah. High praise for MJ Emerson and certainly well-deserved. You, Team USA, by the way, just had a great on-goal opportunity and just airmailed it, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, it, it's going to be pretty tough, I think. <laughs> quite quite tough. Nothing quite like tailgating touchdowns and twisted tea. It tastes just like real iced tea. You know why? Because it is real brewed tea. Cool, refreshing, a 5% kick of alcohol. It's thirst down and goal. Twisted tea, hard iced tea. Keep it twisted. We play a little better, worse, higher, or lower coming up next. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by BallyBet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
offering easy ways to keep gambling fun as Gibbe is here for a little better or worse. Real, real quick, if I may, I just want to thank Boys Al for on the holiday weekend. He stepped up and wrote the winning mix, and yep. he did obviously a great job. It inspired a win. I'm not saying that there's, you know, he's 100. <laughs> percent He's got 100. He's never lost right in the winning mix. But I noticed I just a want difference. To say thank you for I, that. I bookmark it, and I did notice yep. a different, more optimistic tone in the winning mix. It I felt noticed. like it was written by a, an, a professional writer. A professional writer. As well. And yeah, someone who I think also, one thing I've noticed about writers, uh, Dr. Z, is you want to yeah. exercise that muscle as much as possible. You know, you want they can, almost can't stop writing. They like writing so much that they just want to write yeah, and write. Sometimes. And, write. and so I think that's another thing. Sometimes they're like a meteor. Note. A meteor. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they're like a meteor because you got to make sure you get them to write as much as they can in their writing window. Sometimes the writing that's window true. closes. And it's over. So, yeah. I, just another but, thing to consider. Bo, you sound like you're coming from a, a writing background here. Have you written stuff before? God, no. No, no never. Oh, nor okay. will I, I ever. I was going to say, if you would like I to write the next winning Nor will I ever too, write again. <laughs> hey, never say never, my Boys out. did you enjoy never writing the winning I feel like I can say never, Gibbe. It was, it was good, yeah. And and it should be fun for everybody involved who, who writes it. Obviously, it's been me and you, but um, Boy, I think it's fun. I yeah. wish we could rehash. Really and I know you think it's fun, too. The text conversation that the three of us had on Saturday morning. After I had had a I couple. was ready to write it. And, and Boy, Boise I was Al ready. Said, I teed off you're on getting you a Christmas good. tree. <laughs> Boys <laughs> out, bailed out. That is par for the course. That's not even noteworthy. <laughs> no, it was very. It was a very nice gesture. I might have gotten it wrong. I went back and looked. And I was like, boy, Bo- I towed that Boise- line a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a Teflon to your insults. It, I, it doesn't even make me raise an eyebrow. I expect it. <laughs> nothing but nice things to me. It, like, freaks me out. Um, AP, how long did it did it take you to get into the mix? Uh... Uh, like you said, it took you 30 minutes. I think for me it took about 45 minutes to an hour because I needed to do a little oh, okay. additional research. I know you knock out all your research during the week, but um, I wanted to make yeah. sure I had my uh, everything squared away. So it took let me about me throw, Let me throw throw something out here. Let's okay. just let's let's spitball on the air for a second. I think everybody enjoys that okay. in the radio medium since it is a talking like where this medium. Is going, it's a talking medium. What if medium. I gave you? What if I and Bo? We got to while well, Bo's still in his talking window. We got to make sure we capitalize on that. Before he That's right. At any down. point, I could want to draw pictures. At any point, I, I don't talk anymore. Sorry, Sorry. I'm out. By the way, Pul- out. I mean, Pulisic I, I is, see a is world. out right now. Pulisic, He's, Christian Pulisic is he out. He is literally Pulisic. kind of running around the field and with doctors and got, trainers buddy, while the game is still going. He took a knee. Well, they can't sub he out, so he's trying to see if he can speed. go. Yeah. He that's took a knee at full speed to the nether regions. That's, yeah, and they can he's go. A, he's under you can duress. Chill out with with a man down for a minute and a half or a couple minutes until he gets Stop right. Stop his time. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. He's there safe. we go. He's so safe. anyway, back to my quick yes. spitballing idea. I mean, what if I just prepared you topics and bullet points, and then you said, "Hey, this is great." You wouldn't even have to do research. It would just be Nathan. I, I right think there you, for you you need to give yourself more credit. You are not a bad writer. And uh, I think you do a good job of presenting like information every week and winning like races. Um, I, I would love to actually, veteran yeah, right now. Said, I would love to have you even write even more stuff. Hey, honestly. the off season's but coming. Yeah, I know there's not a coming. chance. We'll have zero. Some draft. I'm definitely going to need zero some percent for a little draft. You, you can, do you do a good job, somebody, Nathan. I think it's how about somebody just transcribes. How about Gibbe? Uh, since you stayed back there and 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 Connor's out here, you know, working amongst the people at Glorious Buffalo Wild Wings in Avon Lake. <laughs> Maybe Gibbe could just transcribe because we do a segment on the show called The Winning Mix on Friday where I orate the winning mix. How about and maybe you Gibby just transcribes it. it. Boom. There it is. Yeah, it'll take How you to transcribe it. That's not a bad idea. You say it Friday. takes you 30 Goodbye. minutes. Listen. Save you 10 minutes and transcribe that, Nathan. Really could have. There's really probably. <laughs> You're a, asking me to transcribe. Yes. Why would the man transcribe AP, his own stuff? AP, like we started off with you doing so well. Right. Yeah, now it's all gone south. Yeah. It's all gone south. Man, I know what so you're trying compliments. to. I know what you're hinting at, Nathan. We'll g- give it away. Boys, you just listen, ignore it and say, "Listen, we'll you've got me for 2022. You've got me for 22, 2022, and then no, I'm going to pull take a, knee in a the classic leg. rider move. The minerals. Yes, I'm gonna, that's what I said. The nether yes. regions. I thought the you said I'm going to pull a classic rider knee. move, and I'm going to close my riding window for uh, January 1st, 2023. Riding window closed. I don't do it anymore. Sorry. We'll chat. But now. I still do it. No, I got you. This wait, wait till you see this one. I'm gonna give you a winning mix. The mix best winning mix ever. Let's oh, go. we got a breakaway. Come on. Yep. Come on. We got a three Gibbe, on two. You, you, you got to paint oh. more of a picture, Gibbe. You listen to the great Jim Donovan all the time. You got to paint a better picture of the action. Is it legal to do that? 
No, totally not. I don't know. Ooh, I, I also it. think our TV's ahead of <laughs> yeah, uh, I was Zagurus. Say. <laughs> you guys are way ahead of – you're way ahead of us I don't us know if they here. can hear no spoiled it, but yeah. Yeah, he said three on two, and then I was like, I don't right. see that yet. And then, oh, there it was. Yep, there it is. Reminds me of my favorite drill, three on two, two on one. The best. Best Screwed basketball drill ever. Undefeated. Kids love it. Yep. Higher or lower presented it. by Keep It Fun Ohio from the Ohio Here we Lottery, go. Offering That's what we're easy doing ways to keep gambling fun. Uh, ESPN.com <laughs> power <laughs> rankings. Should the following AP, teams be higher or so lower or just today. right? AP, I'll start with you. The Browns in at number 24. Should they be higher, lower, or are they it's just ridiculous. right here going into week 13? Uh, yeah, they should be higher. They are better. Uh, there are a few teams ahead on this list that they can definitely beat. Um, it's honestly kind of insane to me that the Bucks are at number 16. They're 16. Uh, yeah, that's, tip it down. that's crazy. Um, however, they still haven't won back-to-back games this season, and that's why I think they're still here. That's what they obviously at this point now they're four and seven. That's what they need to do. They need to win out probably. All right. so. so did we not did just you, beat you, the Bucks, right? So you got to be ahead of them. Do we yep. have Deshaun yep. Watson playing this week? We do. Okay. That's right. All right. So if, if those two things are true, then how can you be behind, for example, Green Bay, the Vegas. Saints? Saints? Come on, man. Vegas. Too. Come on. What are we even doing here, man? By the way, did you see where we were in this particular power pole last week? I did. 29. 29th. Jeez. I mean, I know we were Iterated. achieving, but come on. Yeah. Next. Higher or lower? Zagura. Kansas City's at one. Philly's at two. Buffalo's at three. Dallas, number four. Dallas, higher, lower, or just right? The disrespect being shown to the Miami Dolphins is unfathomable to me. Tua Tungvaluwa is leading the NFL in every single category that matters for a quarterback. They added Bradley Chubb to their defense. They got Xavier and Howard. Their deep pitched a shutout, was given up one yard a play, granted against the Texans, but they've beaten the Bills head-to-head. They have not lost a game that Tua has started and finished this year, and so to me, this is outrageous. So while I do like the Cowboys, I, I like them a lot, but I don't think they should be ahead of Miami. In fact, I don't think the Bills should be ahead of Miami right now. In fact, I don't think I think the only team that really should be ahead of Miami right now is the Kansas City Chiefs. It so bump them down. Everybody had the of Dolphins them, actually worse. won by 15 and dropped a spot. These the people aren't board. watching the games. They, Come on. They won 30 to nothing is what they won, and then they stopped playing everybody. And I've never seen an NFL time. team drop its first and s- its first stringers on offense and defense at half. And then Ever. get penalized in this power pull. Next. It's insane. Higher or lower? Dolphins 5, Vikings 6, uh, 49ers 7, Bengals 8, Bo Bishop. The Bengals, higher, lower, or just this, this, right? This thing's all screwed up. I mean, you got to have Miami higher. I would have San Francisco higher. You, we're judging these teams Same. on who they are now, not what they've done all season. Like a power ranking should be how good are you right now? The Vikings are too yep. high right now. Their defense is brutal. Their offense is good, but I would have San Francisco ahead of them. Miami's got to move up higher um, it's for sure. Cincinnati right now, this is pretty close to sweet spot for them. I like them more than Dallas. I probably would like them head-to-head against Minnesota. Really? Um, I think they're right in the cusp of where they should be, though. I wouldn't move them too much. It's right around here, seven or eight for them. That's a hell of a win and a hell of a defensive performance out of them, and they did it without mix and they did it without chase. Both are coming back this week. Next, one final one. Higher or lower? Boyzell, this is it. Tennessee 9, Ratbirds 10, the New York Football Jets, number 11. Jets, higher, lower, or just right, Poizel? All right, I think you guys are going to roast me for this, but I think it's just right. I know there are some big questions on offense still, but their defense is playing, in my opinion, really, really well right now still and is giving them a chance to win every single game. And when you look at the other teams that are behind them on this list, I don't see how you can make a strong, surefire argument that the Jets are going – to not win, basically. It's just uh, the Chargers. They have the Chargers below. Yep. The Chargers I was going to say, below. right. That's, a, that's yep. the it's, team. That's it's my team. not a matter a of the fact that I think they're necessarily um, a top 10, t- like they belong in the top 10 or top 11. But just when you look at the teams behind them on this list, I, I think the Jets are actually in the right spot. Commies are playing AP. pretty well. AP, we get a Madden simulation neutral field, yep. okay? Uh-huh. Jets, Chargers. Chargers win, you write the mix the rest of the year. Jets win, you, I write the mix the rest of the year. Are you feeling confident that you're not writing the mix? Uh, 
are, are, are the Chargers getting Keenan Allen both and and Mike Williams? Are they getting both? They're of them? getting the Chargers as they, they are right Keenan now. Allen. They're getting as they are right now. No Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. Yes. Look, I still think I'm taking the Jets because I, the Jets defense okay. is just so right. good right now. I'm sorry, like, Gosh. but it's going I to be it would take a game. You would be writing the winning mix. I think you would be. You'd be writing the losing mix. and make this game happen on a, on a random Friday. <laughs> right. Great stuff, AP. To settle a score. As yes, always, good tremendous. job out of you. Hey, Browns fans, skip the chore of laundry. Enjoy life, not laundry. Tide Cleaners offering 30% off dry cleaning for the month of November. Just mention promo code BROWNS. Visit TideCleaners.com to find the closest location to you. Some exclusions may apply. So much more to come. You'll listen to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland. Hey, Browns fans, enter for a chance to win Browns season tickets. Free Milkbone dog trees for a year and more. It's all courtesy of Milkbone, the official dog treat of the Cleveland Browns. Visit browns.com slash Milkbone to enter, then visit your local Meyer to check it all out. The varieties of Milkbone dog treats. This has been a real treat, Z. You out there at uh, Avon Lake at the Buffalo Wild Wings location out there. I had a there. blast. I had a blast. Yeah. You guys missed out. Sorry. Sorry I feel bad about guys, it. I, listen, you know how much I would have loved to have been it's, there. It's not too late. It's Wing Tuesday for people to come down here, get an order of traditional wings, get the second order 50% off, get to watch the U.S. up one nothing, and get to watch uh, the worst rule in all of sport, offsides in football. You, Colleen I think, was mad at me I for saying that. I think you're right. I, I think, think it's a horrible rule. It's ridiculous. One minute. And this so one dumb. was brutal. Like, this was really Awful. a brutal call. Um, yeah, I think it's stupid, too. If you, if you don't want him back there, go guard him. If you, want, if you want to make sure that nobody has a free run, be behind them. Duh. Go back there. No one's Go stopping back you. There. 
You can cherry pick in the NBA. There's that saying, oh, if you, but if you want to go stand there, down there, and while they play we'll five go on score. Four, 30. We'll go score. Fine. I like Great. it. I miss, I miss your face. We'll see you tomorrow back here in studio. Uh, we thank everybody out at the Avon Lake Buffalo Wild Wings. Fantastic hosts, as always. The next level is coming up next. Thanks for listening, everybody. Cleveland Browns Daily, 850 ESPN Cleveland.